Hello and today we're going to be taking a look at the Makita XRJ04Z 18 volt brush reciprocating saw. So let's get started. Starting off at the rear of the tool we have the 18 volt battery slot which will accept Makita 18 volt batteries. Moving upward we have the variable speed trigger and above the trigger we have the lockout slash safety switch. When the lockout switch has been pushed into the locking position the trigger cannot be pulled. And in front of the trigger and on either side of the body, we have brushing caps. Behind the brushing caps are the brushings. In order to replace the brushings, you will need to remove the cap with a screwdriver and then you'll be able to replace the brushings. Overall, it is a very simple and quick system and very convenient for when you need to replace the brushings. Moving to the front of the tool, we have the quick change blade clamp. In order to change the blade, you simply twist the blade clamp into the open position and then you'll be able to remove the current blade. And then when you need to insert a new blade, you simply push the blade into the clamp and then it will lock onto pl into place. Overall, I have to say, I really do enjoy the design of this quick change blade clamp. It's definitely superior to the Ryobi's and it's probably my personal favorite out of most of the systems I've tested so far. So definitely props to Makita for this design. Moving forward, we have the pivoting shoe. And of course, then we have the blade itself. The reciprocating saw with a four amp hour battery and a reciprocating saw blade weighs around 8.4 pounds. So it's definitely not a lightweight reciprocating saw. However, you can still use it one handed. It's just a lot more tricky. And without a blade or battery, the tool weighs right underneath seven pounds. The shoe is removable. However, the length of the shoe is not adjustable. It's either on or off, unfortunately. It would have been nice to have an adjustable shoe, but I guess we'll just have to keep waiting for that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the trigger. You can use it with either one or two fingers and it is a nice smooth trigger. It doesn't really get stuck anywhere and it's definitely a well-designed system with no wobble to either side. So definitely a nice trigger. The one thing I would change about the trigger is the fact that the definition between the different speeds is, well, as usual with Makita tools, not very good. It's really easy to get from the low speeds to the high speeds, but if you want to use anything in between, well, it's rather difficult. I think Makita probably should work on this a little bit, but that's just my own personal thoughts on the matter. Everybody's different and everybody has different opinions, but for me personally, I definitely would have preferred more definition in between the different speeds. Okay, let's talk about the different reciprocating saws that I've reviewed so far and which one I think is the best. Now overall, it's actually kind of hard to describe which one is the best because they're kind of different categories. The, the budget Ryobi is just a, it's a budget tool, so you really can't compare it to the Makita in any sense of the word. And the two-handed Makita really cannot be compared to the one-handed Ryobi, simply because they're kind of used for different purposes. One-handed reciprocating saws are typically used for quick and easy work, such as pruning or cutting off pipe, and two-handed reciprocating saws are usually used in demolition or for cutting steel. So as you can see, you really can't compare them. Overall, though, if I was to compare the build quality, the Makita definitely reigns supreme. From just from the kind of plastic and rubber that they use to just how the blade system works, everything about the Makita just screams quality. Now the Ryobi isn't bad, it's just not on the same level as the Makita. Now power wise, the Makita is also the winner. The motor in the Makita, even though it's an older brush motor, is definitely superior to the brushless motor in the one hand reciprocating saw. And I think the stroke length is also superior to on the Makita. So the Makita is by hands down the winner in this category. And it's the tool that I turn to for heavy work. Now if it's light and easy work, the one hand reciprocating saw is usually the one that I use simply because it's lighter and easier to work with. But at the same time, if I need to cut steel or cut th through something that's extra thick, the Makita is definitely the one I will grab. So overall, that's how it stacks up. The budget Ryobi isn't horrible if you don't own a reciprocating saw or you need a backup. But just keep in mind that you really cannot compare it to any of the other tools or reciprocating saws that I've reviewed th thus far. And that is it for the general overview of the tool. So here's some videos of how the tool looks and sounds.
talk about how this reciprocating saw performed. Overall, this reciprocating saw handled everything that I threw at it. It handled the metal, it handled the nails, it handled the screws, it handled the steel, it handled the PVC, it handled the wood, it handled everything. Everything that I could throw at. Now, I didn't throw concrete at, well, simply because it's dangerous to throw concrete, and I didn't have anything concrete that I needed to cut, and I don't think most people typically do either. But overall, I think if you have the right blade, it would be able to handle that just fine as well, too. Now, the main issue I did run into while using this reciprocating saw would be the battery life. Now, the battery life is still superior to the budget Ryobi that I reviewed earlier this year, but at the same time, it's still not as good as a brushless reciprocating saw, simply because, well, brushless consumes less power, so you'll have a longer operating time. It still was not horrible in the field, but just keep in mind that if you're going to be doing a lot of cutting, you might want to pack an extra couple batteries. That's really the main issue with two-hand reciprocating saws is they usually have the power that you need to do the job. It's just more of a fact or more of the matter of having the batteries to do the job. Typically, when it comes to two-hand reciprocating saws, I would prefer to use a corded reciprocating saw, but in the real world, you're not always able to use a corded reciprocating saw for all the projects. And I think this little Makita actually fills the role of a portable two-hand reciprocating saw extremely nicely. So I would have to say I've been highly impressed with this reciprocating saw thus far. And that is it for the videos of the tool in action, so let's move on to the pros and cons of the tool. And the first pro is 18 volts. I think 18 volts is about the perfect size for power tools, especially when it comes down to the price and power ratio. So overall, definitely a pro that it's 18 volts. Build quality. The build quality of this tool is exceptional. I have to say, there really is nothing on the build quality that I dislike. Everything about this tool feels like a high quality tool. Everything from the weight to the power to just the overall ergonomics, everything about it is fantastic. So definitely a pro in my opinion. Easy blade change. I really love the fact that the blade clamp on this is so easy to change the blades with. The fact that the blade clamp stays open when you remove the blade and when you push the new blade in, it locks into place, makes it a very easy tool to work with when you need to change the blade. So overall, definitely a pro in my opinion. Easy brushes change. To change the brushings in this reciprocating saw, all you have to do is remove two different plastic caps on either side of the body. Overall, this is definitely a pro feature, and the fact that you don't have to disassemble the entire tool in order to change the brushings is definitely a pro in my mind. Powerful motor. The motor in this reciprocating saw, even though it's brushed, has more than enough power to cut through just about everything the typical person was, is able to throw at it, and it was able to handle everything that I threw at it. So overall, I do think that the motor is a pro in my opinion. Grip. Now, in my review of the Makita Multi-Tool, I said that it was very hard to hold on to because of the diameter of the tool. Now, that's not the case with this reciprocating saw. Overall, this reciprocating saw grip is fantastic for somebody with smaller hands like myself. It's very easy to hold on to, and I have no complaints about the grips. They're made out of a high-quality rubber, which is not too soft or too hard, and so definitely a pro in my opinion. I think it'll stand up great to the test of time. And the first meh is brushed. Now, brushless technology is superior to brush technology simply because of the runtime and durability. However, the brush still is not a bad way to go, and it definitely makes the tool more affordable. So overall, it's not really a con, but it's not really a pro. It's just kind of a meh. And the second meh is the trigger. Now, the trigger is fantastic. It works great, and it's a good design. There's nothing wrong with the trigger. I just personally would have preferred to have a little bit more definition in between the different speeds. And that's just my own personal preference. It's just, it's too easy to go from the lower speeds to the higher speeds. There needs to be more medium speeds. But that's my own personal preference and everybody's different. So that's why it's on the meh list. And the final meh is battery life. Now the battery life is not bad for a brushed reciprocating saw of the size and of this power. It's just one of those things that I personally would have preferred maybe a little bit longer battery life. But without going to brushless, I really don't see how that's possible. So overall, that's why it's on the meh list and not on the con list. Because it's just something you need to keep in mind that you might need to pack a couple extra batteries when using this particular reciprocating saw. And the first con is no LED. The fact that this reciprocating saw does not have an LED light on it and the price of it is $120, in my opinion, is unacceptable. It's not a deal breaker, don't get me wrong. It's still a great reciprocating saw and it still does a fantastic job. My main issue is that there are many cheaper reciprocating saws that have LED lights on them. So in my opinion, it's really something that should have been included for the price that you're going to be paying for this reciprocating saw. 
And that is it for the pros and cons of the Makita XRJ04Z 18 volt reciprocating saw. Now, would I recommend this reciprocating saw? Yes, I would highly recommend it. I think it's a fantastic two hand reciprocating saw and it feels great in the hands. Overall, the plastic on it is super scratch resistant and of a high quality and the rubber is even more so. The rubber is not too soft and it's not too hard. So I definitely really do enjoy using this reciprocating saw and I was able to handle everything that I threw at it. Whether it was cutting metal, cutting nails, cutting wood, cutting plastic PVC, cutting tree lambs, you name it, it could handle it. So I would definitely recommend this reciprocating saw to anybody who is in the need of a two-handed reciprocating saw, which is battery operated, and they're on a little bit tighter budget than brushless would allow. Now, obviously brushless is still the superior route to go, but at the same time, this definitely has a niche and a place of still in today's market. So I would definitely recommend it to anybody who is in the need of a two-handed reciprocating saw and doesn't mind going with Makita or adapting batteries or buying new batteries. So quite frankly, highly recommended. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. God bless.